Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Charvel420. I hope y'all are having a good day today. Um, forgive my voice. I'm not feeling great. Uh, it's just winter problems. You know how that is. The weather changes and everything goes south for a little bit. So uh, just bear with me on that one. Uh, today, I'm bringing in uh, a session with Nutball. Uh, he and I play pretty regularly together. Netball, enjoy the games, man, for sure. Um, today, I'm bringing in, at this time, this was over the last weekend, uh, I've been really trying to work on uh, different soldiers. Instead of ace and eagle all the time, I'm trying to be a well-rounded player. Um, so I'm not the greatest scout right now, and this is like my early attempts here. Um, uh, so a lot of them are with Zen. And then a few in the end are going to be with talk, you know. So uh, maybe not the strongest play on my part. But personally, I really enjoy playing the scout. I like finding the enemies. And I like the information that's uh, brought. You know, when you send the plane, you see where everyone's at, the enemy, on the mini-map. But you don't know who's who. That's where the scout comes in. You can, If you have uh, one or two very dangerous players on the opponent's team, that scout can find that, those people, and then the team can really you know, devise a plan to attack those dangerous players first or however you want to go about it. It's new information. I just find that too many times when people play scout, they never play the scout part. They only play it like a different soldier with a different gun who has grenades. Which, by the way, I'm terrible with the grenades. Even though there's an aiming mechanism now for the grenades, you know, I don't know. When, when you're in close combat, you don't have time to really look or whatever. My instincts are terrible, so you'll see a good dose of that. But I definitely enjoy playing with Zen. It's just a lot of games right now. It's like, even when the games are great, you know, like the overall team play or whatever has accomplished that match, you know, I might end up with like 60 points of damage and one kill or whatever. But I definitely enjoy it. So I hope you do too. I like this particular match because uh, the team just went central. Um, that's a... A confident team you know they galaxy notes on the other corner of the the uh, cap here I'm on this corner we got a sniper up close and personal here I'm about to waste a grenade um, you know uh, I do find these matchups more and more enjoyable I've been going central on a lot of different maps and let the enemy come to you it's like you're defending the Alamo you know they just have to come out of the bushes and, and see if they can knock you out of the position and uh, man there sometimes the firefights are just totally badass All right, that's the one good grenade that I threw in a lot of games. That's just good stuff right there, you know. Uh, we took control of the center, and uh, you saw that sniper. He had to rush the cap unsupported, really. The rifleman hung back for some reason, uh, but the sniper realized they're at 90% uh, capturing the flag, and you got to do what you got to do. So um, look at that. The rifleman had zero damage the whole game. Didn't even bother to, to come in with the, his own sniper. That's sad. All right, we're on Last Days. Um, last Days is a good map for a soldier like Zen because one, uh, up on that horseshoe, uh, curved, raised area up there, it's a good place to use um, Zen's long-range sighting ability uh, to spot enemies for snipers. Plus, it, uh, Zen has three grenades. There's a lot of places to take cover over here to the left of all the vehicles. So grenades uh, become a bigger factor. 
on that side. So it really favors uh, both assets that uh, Zen has. Grenades, long range sight. Um, so this is a good map uh, or game for me. Me and Nutball really coordinate well together. Here I am trying to get in position and then to perform some scouting duties here. See where everyone's at. The only recognizable name is Apocalypse, uh, to me at least, uh, on the opposing team. So I find them there. And then I find that they're... See, I love catching infant, uh, riflemen. You know, it's like, oh, well, here we go. They're on this side of the map. Uh, we knew early on. And uh, if I can try and stay, keep them lit up, then, um, you know, Nutball, my other snipers, can really be in a good position to uh, snipe them. That was an example of a scout doing another function, okay? When you pair long range with the short range, like the scout, I just found the infantry early. So everybody could be on the same page, like, okay... Infantry to the left of the map. Everybody get coordinated. You're not gonna have to worry about being rushed on the right hand side now I found that but when they did rush I was close to my snipers. I was there to help defend you know um, So once they were in my range, I'm giving off rapid fire shots. So even when I miss uh, They're getting suppressed and then nutballs Popping them for 70 or 90 points of damage at a time. So combining those two different firing types uh, together, you know, it's good coordination. So here I am going back to getting uh, um, more information for Nutball. Um, and then if I could spot them, even when they, it's kind of like having a wall hack, okay? You spot them, even when they move behind that trolley car or whatever, you can see that they're standing, not going prone, which means, okay, you know, uh, maybe they'll pop out to the left of the car or whatever. If they go prone, you can assume they're going to be taking a very defensive stance. So um, keeping your eyes on the enemy is really important. Uh, so you can make better guesses, even if they're completely hidden by cover. You know, It's better than this scenario here. Okay, I know the rifleman's behind the car, but what exactly are they doing? You know, um, so that's why I'm swinging around. I'm going to put my eyes on both of them, and uh, it just paints a better picture for a sniper. And what I mean by that, if I were able to get around this car and look at the enemy, by painting the picture, I mean, even if the sniper's view is completely blocked, they it will help them anticipate a little more. Like here, I can see where the guy is. I, maybe he's going to go around the corner or whatever. But look, the second I light him up, I'll, it makes, boom, that guy just got hit, and I finish off the last one. That was good coordination between a scout and sniper. And, uh, you know, I can rely on somebody like Nutball to make their shots, you know. That's uh, another key factor right there. If you have somebody that's not that great as a sniper, odds are you're going to end up getting killed as a scout because that guy has to hit their targets. Nightball definitely do that. All right, I'm liking my team here. Uh, I think we're going to be the favorites uh, just by the matchup here. Um, although I'm a weak scout, I um, uh, definitely like the lineup that we got. I hope that rifleman with the random name of our, on our team doesn't plan on just hanging back there. So we'll see what he does. But kneeling down behind the building. Uh, at, at the spawn area is not a good sign. That's not what a rifleman's supposed to do, especially if he's shooting with an AK, one of the least accurate guns of the rifleman. Um, so, and I still don't see him moving, so... Alright. That said, though, I mean, I do recognize that they have only one sniper, three riflemen, and a scout. And I'm a scout and we have one rifleman. So, it's not a good idea to just be overly aggressive and go too far away. You, you have to be able to defend your snipers, hope that your snipers are effective, and get the odds back in your favor. So, I'm not trying to be too harsh. I just don't hang out in the spawn zone. That's all I do.
There I go, throwing bad grenades again. Mmm, miss. Airball. Alright, so here I am trying to set up an ambush. I figured, you know, if they're trying to third party peek around the mound or the hill, um, you know, that won't be enough to light me up or anything. Uh, so I'm hoping I'd blend in with the terrain. But then I'm dropping the ball because I basically had tunnel vision. You know, that's a scouting duty right there. I did manage to help protect uh, my sniper in the end, but. I should have kept my head on a swivel and I should have kept moving around. Once, you know, I got in this position originally and I didn't see the rifleman, I should have known something else was up. Uh, so I should have just kept running around the corner, staying a little closer with my sniper until we found the rifleman. But in the end, that part worked out well. But that's a case of me treating the scout like it's a rifleman and it's not. Definitely appreciate Darla's uh, aggressive style. That was a little unnecessary to expose himself to the uh, third rifleman. Um, I had his back on that second guy, but uh, there's no need to die there. That's a well-timed plane right there. Um, we're, we're moving on to the final phase of the match. We just cleared an enemy and I know I need to regroup and anytime you have to regroup because you cleared an area or whatever, it would be nice to know where everyone of the enemy is spread out at. Um, so uh, that, that was good on whoever sent that plane. Also having that information from the plane gave me the confidence to run right on down. I see that the time is running out, that somebody needs to be on the cap, you know, but if I have to look first and find everyone and and see where the safe path is i might not even had enough time to to get there or i could have been killed easily since i only had 40 hit points so um you know when you when you use the plane um you know there are appropriate times to use it and that was definitely one of them All right, so see here, we're on the cap. We're at 63%. They have to come to us. They know they can't fool around, and this is working in my favor. I'm, I have a short-range uh, weapon, so uh, yeah, definitely come to me. I, that's that's what we what we want, you know. Uh, unfortunately, I have six hit points now, but uh, you know, nothing I could do about that. Ah. And usually I'm pretty damn good in those situations, man. I just, he nicked me with a bullet. And I didn't have any bullets to spare, so... Um, good on him. But, man, I really, I'm certain I thought I had that. Okay, so we're moving on to Afghan border. I got Nutball. Uh, it's the only person I recognize. Uh, on my team. And um, I switched the talk, so let's see how this works out. I feel like Tok is massively overpowered. Um, the grenades can do 60 damage or something, and, you know, uh, being on the opposing side of a Tok so many times, one bullet sometimes, they'll get a chest shot that's random, like hip fired, and it does like 90 points of damage, you know, because if you're close to them, that, that's absurd, you know, and then. Long range, you know, each bullet can be like 45, 45 points of damage. I mean, give me a break, you know. 
you got two grenades and all that damage, like, you know, that's why I don't even play pack. I think it's uh, more of a skill game to do ace, you know, but, um, you know, I'm trying to mix it up. But I, I think they did a real injustice for the rest of the soldiers when they just buffed this soldier to the max, you know, too much. And now, Zen no longer is the only character with a with grenades. So, we now have a lot of grenades every game, and I've said it numerous times, but it's too much. You know, we went from shooting to grenades, you know. That's how people finish their kills. They don't have to use their weapon, and I just feel like this was a perfect game that was gun-centric, you know. That's why the characters, and, and tactical. So I get the tactical part with utility, and there's a skill to throwing them, because obviously I don't throw them the best, you know. But I don't like that people finish their kills with grenades uh, almost more than half the time. That, that to me is a loss of skill. Take the ace that I just killed previously. To start with, I got 60 points of damage on a grenade. Ace doesn't have grenades. He was perfectly covered. Um, you know, he did everything he could do to take cover. And previously, without the grenades, both sides would have to figure out to get from point A to point B, not get shot, and shoot the enemy. But now, I have grenades. I just hung back, held my cover, and threw a grenade. That didn't take a whole lot of skill to do that. Now, here is the flip side. Okay, there are a lot of grenades in the, grenade, uh, the game, whether that's going to change or not, I don't know. But then you should take steps to counter that, meaning the ace has a longer range than the top. Maybe the ace shouldn't be so aggressive and push forward. He needs to use his range and be a little more patient and let the sniper pluck off the top. And then, once the grenades are gone, move in, take care of the rest, and so on. So, um, the situation is, is that games can have six or eight or more grenades. You have to play accordingly. So, fortunately, grenades don't have a long range. So, you need to plan for it or just say, hey, I can take one grenade and be aggressive. I just can't take two or whatever the case may be. You just have to play, play that way. I like the spread of our riflemen here. We're in position to basically cover all three lanes of the map. They only have two riflemen, so that's kind of a smart move. And then um, if we discover that your two riflemen are together on one side, we can regroup. But uh, I like that in the start. That's not a bad, bad way to go. And they've already lost a rifleman uh, at this point. Anyways, I got grenades, so I'm definitely going to use them, so, <laughs> and, uh, who doesn't love killing DH Mankata with grenades, because that's just about to happen right here. Sorry, buddy. He's a good guy, uh, great player, fun to play with, uh, we got to do some fire teams again pretty soon, man.
I sensed somebody was going to come at me on that angle. I tried to turn around, just not enough time, so good on them. So I remember when I saw this name, Bravo Mex, Bravo Mex, and the guy was playing Voron, my first thought was, is this a Smurf account for uh, Mex Achilles? And I don't know, I don't remember uh, how that person plays in this game, but it does make me want to bring up one point. I don't think that uh, Forces of Freedom should allow anyone to change your name so easily and so often. You know, if you want to change your name, I don't know, it needs to be the exception, not the rule. You know, maybe you can't change your name for every three months or something like that. Because there are great players who are targeted because they're great, alright? And they get tired of it, so then they change their name and they're essentially acting like a Smurf account. You know, like, um... If you're dangerous, uh, that's going to be the strategy of the opposing team, and you have to take that challenge, you know? I don't think you should hide the fact that you are who you are, you know? If there was some legendary, like, uh, Red Baron flying his plane, and, you know, they would identify that that's the person, well, that person has to now deal with it because they have a reputation for being great, you know? Don't change your name and, and try to hide that, that fact. Just deal with the challenge, you know? But... I can't tell you how many games where there's just these random names at a high level match and then those players play at a high level. It's like, come on, man. Just play who you are. Accept the challenge. You're a great player. Just play with it and don't, you know, I don't know if it's because of the stats or they feel like they're not playing that well or whatever the case may be, but be who you are. If you are uh, an athlete, you still have to go out there as LeBron James and everybody's going to gun after you. You know, he can't change that. That's just going to be the challenge that he has to face. I think that should be the same for online as well. And just to clarify, I in no way think that Achilles would hide his name at all because he has nothing to worry about. Uh, you know, but it was a thought. Like, that's what started the, the idea. telling you i am loving defending the cap i mean uh, as long as you're still in the firefights uh i've said in the past like capturing the flag and just hanging behind a shield that's just not my style at all i still got four kills 308 damage plus i got the experience from being on the cap that's the way to do it that's a fun way to play uh, I like them just rushing at me, and in that case, I was successful, and uh, that made it very rewarding for me. Um, it's a mistake to run three in a group like that kind of cluster right there. Uh, playing as a sniper, that's that just makes it very easy for them. They don't even have to aim. Uh, somebody's going to get hit for 60, 65 points worth of damage. Um, so it's better to spread out. Uh, another option, too, is that other riflemen or I could have gone down low. Like, to the left of where the route I'm running here, but down low where the water is at. Run along that way. We're spread out. And um, also, uh, if you go low, you can't be seen by the snipers. So why not do that? And it gives you the option of going to the cap if uh, 
a plane is sent and you find out that they're loaded up on the opposite side or something like that. So. I tried to warn Bunker as much as I possibly could. I'm shooting like crazy. I eventually got that suppression fire to light up uh, whatever that dude's name is, but Bunker never even turned around. So, I don't know, you can't save everyone. But two points about that. Look at your mini map. In some, to some degree, in the corner of your eye, you see an orange dot, especially an orange dot behind you, that should be enough. Also, you know, like if I'm on this hill right here and it says enemy spots you, the most obvious place I'm going to look behind me, you know, start there and then pan around. It may not be. It could be a scout that's further out on the other hill, but take those warnings um, seriously, you know, like boom. Okay, where'd that come from? Is that behind me or is it in front of me? Is it this sniper that I'm seeing there? Um, I don't know, but here I didn't look behind me yet, you know, um, but I know too as a beginner, there's so much going on, you got bullets, the sounds of grenades and so on, it's overwhelming, you know, and things like that, I wouldn't even register yet, see, there's the second time, I finally turn around, so, um, just have a better, uh, awareness, look at your maps, if you do get shot at, immediately train yourself to look at the map if you don't know where the enemy came from. Instead of just getting that directional where you get the hit and it kind of shows you where they are, use that mini map instead. It gives you a very specific point as you turn to face that enemy. Um, I think that'll uh, work for you a little bit more than just using uh, the direction of where the Well, I'm definitely liking my team. I got myself, Nutball, and Yemen. Uh, he's a great sniper. I'm not familiar with our scout, but uh, G South is a great player. He often plays with Kiki. Um, and I'm not familiar with Bilko, but CCO generally has good players. So, um, but I'm happy with my team. Oh, and Pool Bullet is on my team. He's also a good player. See, Yaman's already taking effect, knocking out Devil Dog. Um, every time I see him play, he, he's done pretty good. Yemen with the second kill, uh, taking out Bilko. So, yeah, it's, games are pretty easy when you got good snipers.
In hindsight, I wish I would have thrown the grenade at G South first and while the grenade's in the air, shot at Zeppo because maybe I would have hit G South. But once I shot my gun, possibly he took cover and was preparing for a grenade or whatever. Um, so I wish I did the order differently. I mean, you could definitely throw something and while it's in the air, take out the next enemy. Um, that's, that's the way to play it. As I mentioned before, it's Grenade City on the right hand side. That's why when you look at the scoreboard in the beginning of the game, take into account what each team has utility wise, how many grenades, how many zins, how many talks, um, because this is what happens. I died trying to save my guy to the right. Uh, I wish he could have been a little more effective since it was only a sniper. You know, at the very least, I was laying down suppressive fire. I was trying to keep him alive. I could have just taken cover for myself, though. Well, we got the win, so I guess that's all that matters. We'll move on to the next one. We got ASO, Nutball. I always said fly to fight, but it's FLW. How would you say that? Floor to fight. We got P769Q18. You know that guy's good. Not really, but all right, let's get this game going. Giving an all well done for a well timed plane. Thank you for that early information. Now I know I have two riflemen on the right hand side here. I got backup with the PQ719 2 Miner, my rifleman. Well, that was disappointing, but it does give me a chance to see A.S. Soul in action and see how he finishes. All right, we're gonna switch the spotlight to Nutball. Boom, 100. Ooh, almost got the second shot.
Good job, Nutball. Getting that chest shot is going to help our rifleman or our sniper turn around and finish that guy up. Very nice snow scope, you'd love to see it. Another strong finish by AS Soul. It's a good, good match for the team there. Not so much on my end, but uh, you know, that happens sometimes. I did get 61 damage. Let's not forget about that 61, guys. Super important. Okay, so here we are, Coastline, one of my favorite maps. I really don't know most of the players here, but let's see how this one plays out. I'm remembering this one now because I use it in the talk, uh, talk video. So, because I'm so used to playing Ace, I thought I was putting up my shield. I ended up throwing a grenade instead. So. Wah, wah. But this is great teamwork. I mean, it's still not even halfway into the match, but yet I'm supported by my team. We lost one on the way, but we advanced. We didn't wait till the very end. Uh, I didn't have to rush by myself. You know, we just all went together. You're gonna lose some people at times. That's gonna happen, but you can't be timid. You gotta push forward to get good results. It's all about getting that win. Everything else will follow, you know, um, but I just don't understand playing scared uh, in a video game, you know. What are you scared of? Stats? I got Nutball behind me to the left using his appropriate range. I got grenades. Um, I'm closing in. This dude's pretty much toast. Um, in fact, I know he is. So, well, this is going to conclude our fire team session with fire, uh, Nutball. Uh, again, thank you, Nutball, for all the games. Uh, I definitely enjoy playing with you, man. Um, look forward to many more matches to come so i hope everybody enjoyed this one uh if you did please do like and subscribe i would appreciate that i would love to get more subscribers with more regular views